glamorous enough. All right. Beth began to giggle. They were nuts, the both of them. The dishes were washed, dried, and put away when she came out. Neil caught her bags and carried them to the ISO Griffo. Beth gave a last look around the cottage, then followed him, closing and locking the door behind her. They drove through the summer day almost like a pair of conspirators, Beth thought. Neil was running away from his business duties, and she was fleeing from the bearded man. But it was more than that, she realized. They were reaching out for something, too. Beth wanted to find out if Neil was the playboy type or not. And Neil? What was he after? Had he given her a pitch about making up that playboy lie? Was he telling the truth? Was he counting on that to wear down her resistance? Did he expect the moonlight and the campfires to help him? That must be it. She could think of no other reason why Neil Harper would want to go on a camping trip, right about now. They drove all day, until toward dusk Neil nosed the ISO Griffo onto a dirt track that ran in under some trees. It bounced over rough and tree roots for two miles. But when the trees fell away, Beth could see a lake and a spread of grassy knoll that ran its grass down to the water. I like it, she said. I found it years ago. It's off by itself, there's good fishing in the lake, and there's a store on the other side where we can rent a canoe. Or a rowboat. Neil put up the tent first, then helped Beth start a fire in a ring of smoke blackened stones to one side. Neil had put those stones there a long time ago. Nobody had ever disturbed them. In moments, red flames were throwing shadows all around them. From somewhere at the edge of the woods, Neil found two crude wooden benches he had left here years before. A yellow tarpaulin had protected the wood from the weather, it was trailing now from the benches as Neil carried them. The tarp comes in handy when it rains. It protects all our gear. Now then, how about steak and salad for supper? Beth watched as he brought a hamper of food and dry ice from the car trunk, went to help sort it out. There was enough here for two days, she decided, lifting out a thick steak and carrying it to the grill Neil had set into the ground on iron legs above the fire. In moments, the smell of grilling beef filled her nostrils, making her realize how hungry she was. There was salad to be prepared, and thick rope for dressing from a jar, and bread to be toasted over the flames. They ate side by side on the benches, with the moon above and the stars like diamonds in the blue velvet sky. The night was pleasant, still warm from the day, but with a hint of coolness in the wind sighing gently across the lake. Her shoulder rested against Neil's and its warmth and bulk seemed very natural to her. It was good to lean against him. He lighted a cigarette for her, and to her surprise, lifted out a pipe and filled it with tobacco. When he caught her eye, he grinned. Seems fitting, somehow, for an old married man, he laughed, holding out the pipe before lighting it. Do you object to pipe smoke? I don't know, she said slowly. Then let's find out. She enjoyed it, she decided, after a few sniffs. Out in the open, it was very pleasant, almost part of the scenery. Was Neil doing this to impress her?